Hey everybody, welcome to episode six on emotional intelligence. There's a whole lot to go through today, so once again, get your notebook ready, and we're gonna do some scenarios. First, I'm gonna start with an overview of emotional intelligence and what we're gonna cover. Then we're gonna go through it. The scenarios will be in there, the questions that you can write down for yourself or listen to and write the answers to in your notebook will be great. So here we go. I hope you got a lot out of this today, and let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I always appreciate people checking out how I like to help other people become their best and get the most productivity out of themselves. So we're going to define emotional intelligence. We're going to talk about the benefits and the impact that it has to all areas of your life and how it can help you decrease stress. We're going to talk about how emotional intelligence is related to energy levels. Um, when Remember that catabolic energy is problem focused and anabolic energy allows your choice of response. And so we're going to do a scale of how your emotional intelligence is so you can check out where you think you are with emotional intelligence and see where your gaps are before we worked on strengths and gaps. So you're going to see where you're strong and then the gap of the opportunity is for you to grow. We're going to look at three aspects of emotional intelligence. We're going to gauge your awareness of it. We're going to look at how do you recognize um, your emotions because for a lot of people it's not automatic. We're going to look at the expression of emotional intelligence and we're going to look at limiting beliefs and how your emotions can be expressed appropriately or inappropriately. And then we're going to look at controlling emotions and show how that's significant to success. So as an overview, strategies to increase emotional intelligence will help you with self-awareness. Uh, one thing that you can do to get more in touch with your emotions is journaling to improve, express, and control your emotions. And then you can seek others' assistance with emotional intelligence. So as you want to learn from people that you're close to, that trust you, and that you trust, you can ask them, hey, you know what, um, is it okay if I pay attention to you know how you act and react to certain things and then give you feedback later on? That's like when you get better with your emotional intelligence. And if you feel comfortable enough doing that, not a requirement, just some people might feel like doing it. So other people might not. And then we're going to talk about how you can incorporate new behaviors and skills. We'll talk about being accountable. Remember, you can have someone else to be accountable to. Don't be accountable to a video because you're going to talk to the video, but it's not going to talk back. A little joke there for you. So you can have a coach, you can have a friend, you can have family, etc. Somebody that you trust to confide in and say, hey, I'm working on this thing. Can you tell me every time I lose my temper? Let's say that could be an accountability. Then you could also um, work on your emotions via meditation or going to some kind of a center where you can help you know, get focused and really tune into yourself. You can set daily intentions for your emotions so that you can start your day saying, hey, this is how I want to feel going through the day. And then notice in your journal, am I really doing that? Am I not doing that? When am I not? What's triggering me? Stuff like that. You can interview other people that you think are really good with their emotions and say, you know what, when your kid acts up or when somebody cuts you off in traffic or, you know, when somebody's being too loud or annoying you or following you around the store or whatever, how do you handle that emotionally? You're good at that. You can ask people that. And then when you're really upset, you can spend five or 10 minutes alone uh, by yourself and just think through, you know, how can I assess my emotions and, you know, what are the goals that I'm looking to get out of this. So let's get started. Like I said, we have a lot to get through and I'm gonna be going through our energy leadership development system. So bear with me because there's gonna be a lot of question answer scenario going on. So for emotional intelligence, it can be defined as our ability to distinguish, understand, and have a greater awareness of how our thoughts and feelings connect with our outward displays and behaviors, as well as the ability to manage and express appropriate emotions and help others do the same. So basically what you're doing is you're getting in touch with your own emotions, you're expressing them appropriately, and you're observing when other people around you do and don't do this so that you can now be aware of, oh, well, what happens when I lose my temper? How do people respond to me? What happens to me when somebody is afraid to talk to me because maybe I'm aggressive or maybe I'm standoffish and they don't know how to approach me? So now we're gonna start to learn some of those nuances. So in terms of emotional intelligence, enhancing and developing a greater awareness and application of the elements of emotional intelligence will have a significant impact in all aspects of your life, including an increased awareness of the relationship with yourself, as well as improved relationships with coworkers, friends, families, and others who are significant. So let's do an example 
of how you might handle yourself or a role play of emotional intelligence. So let's say you have two employees and you're their leader or their manager or their boss and you've given them assignment and they have to work on the assignment together. So now they're talking to each other, but they're not listening to each other and they're starting to get irritated and they go back to work being irritated and not and realizing that they didn't listen to each other. And so your question is, how might you inter- how might you intervene to assist those people at that point and realize they are already, you know, being challenged. So what's going to happen with you knowing the fact that these two are already not listening to each other and you're trying to help them work together. So write out your answer to that so that you'll have an understanding of, because we're going to go on and continue the scenario. So again, scenario two, same two people, they're discussing their project. Now they're listening to each other. Now they're taking each other's ideas into consideration. So instead of not being concerned with winning the other over, like level two, like in the beginning, like, oh, no, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. I know my idea. What they're doing now is they're trying to figure out what's best for each other and what's best for the company. So as you observe their interaction and you hear them agree to meet again to talk about what they have to do, let's talk about your role. So what do you think about their chance for success in the second scenario? That's question number two. And basically, why did you answer that way in the second scenario is question number three. So now let's say that we ask those people how they change their dynamic and their style of working together. And they both said to you that you were the leader behind their approach. And so basically they're modeling you and saying, okay, in the second scenario, I was modeling you. And in the first scenario, I was modeling you. So what would you think they would say that helped them make such a shift? So basically you want to ask them, you know, why do they ask, why did they answer? Sorry. The first way saying, well, we're modeling our leader. We're not listening to to each other. What does that tell you about you? And then in the second scenario, they're saying, well, we model our leader. We are listening to each other and you're their leader. What does that tell them about you? And why do you think the answer was different? So how is your answer similar or different than from earlier? So basically now you want to ask yourself, okay, why is my answer in number one different than number two? You know, basically you can talk about them listening, not listening, whatever you're observing. It's a scenario that's basically handed to you, but it can potentially be a real life scenario. And then in scenario number two, why is your answer different? You personally, the leader, like, why do you think you were able to help them the second time as opposed to the first time? And, it, you know, it could be a short answer, a long answer. You can get into detail or not. And it's all fine as long as you're getting in touch with their levels of energy, which first they were confrontational. Second, they were cooperative. Well, why were they that way? And so you can kind of drill down and then you can do that for yourself. And you can say, okay, where do I cooperate or where am I confrontational with other people in general. So let's go on to emotional intelligence as it relates to energy. So energy leadership focuses on all aspects of people and how those people, how those aspects relate to that person's consciousness. So in the first scenario we provided before, we saw coworkers resonating at level two. The focus was on problems, on winning, on losing, basically everything that's wrong. In the second scenario, both of them had anabolic energy. And it's important to note anabolic is building energy and the connection between the two people increases with their productivity as opposed to decreasing from catabolic energy. So the result of the two meetings is totally different based on an emotional perspective and on an energy perspective. So now here's more questions for you going through the workbook so that you can understand what we're talking about and get a deeper understanding of this lesson. If you can describe an experience you had that was similar to scenario one, how did you feel not being heard or not hearing the other person? How did you leave that conversation energetically? Like, did you feel great? Oh, yeah, I got I got over on them, whatever. Did you feel terrible? Like, wow, they really didn't listen to me. That sucks and they suck. And that's why I didn't listen to them. You know, like, how did you feel? And it's your journal. So be as honest as you want, because you're going to read it and you're going to assess yourself on it and look to grow. Second question. Now think about an experience you had that was similar to scenario two, where you're listening, where you're being heard, where you're making agreements. And what were the effects of that conversation for you? Now take that from your past, again, something that was real for you, where you can recall that happening and how your experience was. 
Each of us has a choice as to what energy level we bring into a conversation. So think about a confrontation, meeting, project, or any meeting that you schedule. And so how would you like that to be? Like a confrontation is just confronting somebody just face-to-face is confrontation. It doesn't mean you're about to fight. It just means you're talking to somebody face-to-face. So how would you like to be in your emotions before your meeting, during your meeting, and after your meeting? Now that you know, oh, wait, this is energy leadership. It's subjective. I have a choice. So again, there's going to be two parts to this video because there's a lot to cover and I'm about to get into how you can understand where you might be coming from an anabolic perspective or a catabolic perspective in relationship to your emotions. So attributes of an effective anabolic leader with medium to high emotional intelligence would say something like this. So I'll say anabolic this and then inappropriate aspects of an ineffective catabolic leader. So I'll say catabolic that. And then you'll know which one is which as we're going through this list, because it's a pretty decent list to give you an idea of like, wow, what would that look like if I was being productive and productive and growth producing? So I'm trying to say those two words at the same time. And that's how it came out. Now you got me saying something stupid on video. So have have a good laugh and let's continue with the lesson. So on the anabolic side, you're in tune with his or her own feelings and effectively and appropriately communicates your feelings. Catabolic side, it's... Usually, I'm aware of my feelings, and I keep my emotions to myself, or I show them in a negative manner. Anabolic side, I'm considerate of others' feelings, especially around how people perceive my messages, my my meaning, the leader's messages. Catabolic side, tends not to be aware or not concerned about others' feelings or about the emotional impacts of messages. Anabolic side, is aware of tone of voice, body language, and facial expressions of myself and of others. Catabolic side. No awareness or concern of tone. No awareness or concern of body language. No awareness or concern of facial expressions in myself or in others. So as you're starting to notice, the catabolic side is like clueless. Like I'm checked out. I'm not even there. And this is how a lot of people operate. So we're going to continue. So on the anabolic side understands and is aware of how his or her emotions may affect outward displays of behavior. Catabolic side, typically unaware of how emotions affect outward displays of behavior. Back to the anabolic side. This person acknowledges and validates others' feelings, their work, their contributions, and their challenges. On the catabolic side, they're unaware or tends not to acknowledge or validate others in most capacities. Anabolic side, connects with others and looks to help them develop personally and professionally. Catabolic side is disconnected emotionally and often threatened by others' strengths or skills. So you could also be jealous of other people and be like, damn, they're so good and now I have to work on a team with them and I'm jealous of them. Uh, You might have that energy going on. And that happens a lot in the workplace, at home, maybe in your business. Maybe you see it happening around you. Back to anabolic catabolic. So on the anabolic side... This person has a we instead of a me attitude and is generally positive. On the catabolic side, this person has a me attitude because nobody else matters and is usually negative. Back to anabolic. Is able to remain calm and composed when faced with unfavorable events. That's always hard to do. Like, oh my God, I just got into a car accident. Can you remain calm and composed? Can you be emotionally, intelligently anabolic during that? Try it. It's a challenge. And I'm still working on these lessons. So as I'm reading these and training you on them, I'm retraining myself on them as well because it's an ongoing process. And this video, you can watch again and again. It's going to be up for a long time. And I hope you watch it a lot and tell all your friends. So and on the catabolic side of that, unable to remain calm and composed when faced with unfavorable events, which that's easy. Oh, I had a car accident. Oh, my God. And blame everybody. Uh, Back to the anabolic side. Effectively handles conflict. Okay, that's not anabolic. Because, uh, it's not catabolic because you're handling catabolic conflict and you're being anabolic. On the catabolic side, you're unable to effectively handle conflict and basically get lost in it. So to wrap up here, we have a few more on the anabolic side, able to help other people when they're down. Catabolic is unaware of others' need for help and not comfortable helping. Back to anabolic, encourages others to speak about their feelings. Catabolic side, discourages emotional expression in others at all. Anabolic controls negative and inappropriate emotional outbursts. Catabolic explodes when things break down. And so I'll pick this up in the next lesson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in part two.